it's Simon and we're going to look at easy hands-free looping in Ableton Live. Now there's lots of ways to do this, lots of different videos. I've chose just one method using the pre-arranger, which is part of a performance pack by the awesome Ifta Goodbye. Let's have a look at how to get started. So what do we mean by hands-free looping? Well, you've probably seen Ed Sheeran and Katie Tunstall play their guitars, loop instruments as well on top of each other in real time. Well, we're going to do something a little different, more similar to someone like Elise Trow. If you've never seen her, she's a multi-instrumentalist and she'll start up, I'll put the video here. She starts to play the drums. As soon as the beat's recorded, she walks away from the instrument while it still plays, plays another one. That's what we're going to look at. It's called like linear arranged looping. So we're going to tell Ableton Live when to start and record and what to do with the bits we've recorded. This does take some planning. And thankfully, the pre-arranger helps us do it. So let's have a look at what that does. So this came with Live 12 Suite. It's free if you want Live 12 Suite, and it's a Max for Live device, so you do need Max for Live. If you have that already, you're all set to go. So let's go to Performance Pack by Ifta, and I'm going to use Pre-arranger. Do check the other ones out as well. There's lots of great stuff. Ifta has done a video himself. I'll put a link up there. Check it out. So pre-arranger, I'm going to drag it onto the main. Just so you can see what I've done, it doesn't get confusing on the other track. So from here, you can, once it's on, on, on a channel, it's kind of in the system, and I can create a track. And I can give it a name here. In this case, I'm going to record a piano loop. So if I put piano, then it will create a track. Create track. And here you see two piano and piano. Now, for some reason, it puts the clip right down here. I don't know why it does that. It just does. So it's quite quirky. I like it. And I've got a piano track there. Now, I'm, I'm going to do a live performance. I'm going to set it up in more detail um, and do a performance. But this is just to show you how it actually works first. So if I open that, you can see it says record piano and then piano. So I'm gonna pick this up. Now the only rule that Ifta says on his video is that your quantization needs to be, like say on one bar. So if it starts on bar one, your quantization has to match um, how you want to record. Now in this case, I don't mess around with it. I just kind of want it to start on the beginning of a bar and exit on a bar kind of thing. So I'm not trying to do anything you know, too clever here. So I'm just going to start it from bar five, just so I can have a bit of a run up. But this is the idea. This tells it when to record, and this tells you where the recording is going to go. So it could be straight after, or you can move it anywhere. So just to show you, it doesn't have to be straight after. I'm going to move it, and I'm going to give it a different color. Now, that's only one bar. So let's make it uh, two bars. So I can just stretch this out. And then the same with this. Now this has to be, the, the clip that you've got has to match the same amount as this. So in this case, it's two bars and then I've stretched it two bars. And if I want it to carry on more, it doesn't work if you stretch that out. I've tried it, but if you duplicate it, so it's another clip, it will play it for another two bars. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a gap so you can see what happens and then do that. And then why not do it for one more? So I'm just going to play some cards. So I'll just get a tempo. That's a bit slow. Right, so probably helps if you've got a click. Uh, on the video that I'm going to show you of me performing, I just put like a hi-hat and a synth so to keep me in time. So, of course, with this looping, You've got to practice your playing to get it on time. Um, I'm not saying I will, but, uh, you know, I'll have a go. So it's going to record for two and then play back for two, then another, put a gap. Let's see if it works. All right, here we go. I've got a two bar rolling. So timing wasn't too bad, but then you've got a gap. So you could be 
singing or playing another instrument now and then comes back in. So that's just one way of doing it. So what the idea is now, I'll show you how I set up a few different instruments and there's also another nice bonus feature as well. So let me jump into, here's one I've created earlier. So here's what my arrangement looks like. This is what I've set up to record. And I'll just take you through it. It's not that complicated in how it's set out. Playing it though is a different thing, right? Okay, so let me just show you. I've just got, at the beginning, I put uh, some hi-hats to keep me in time. So you've got, and also I've got um, a wave table just there doing like a sort of synth sound arpeggio thing. And then you notice now when it crosses there, it starts recording. And then this is where I'm going to record a guitar part that will be four bars. So the red, I've, I've made it so I know red, record for four bars. And then as soon as I get to here, it populates the arrangement with four bars each time and then there's a gap and then it does it until the end then the next one i've got it to record into channel seven and again there it starts so record the guitar play the guitar back so i can run over to the moog or moog and then it'll record me playing the synth for four bars and this populates it right to the very end once i've played that it will replay it back. Now, this is something really handy because on this one, I'm going to do an improvised guitar thing. And I've just put some strings there underneath that. And this synth goes all the way across. So the drums, synth line and strings are not being uh, looped live. I just put them there because I know what happens. What's great here, even though I'm not looping the uh, improvised guitar lead, you can actually just put arm lead and it will just arm the channel and then you get to the end and just to mute it at the end, but disarm lead. So that's kind of cool. So when I do this, I'm going to go from playing the guitar, put the guitar, it puts the guitar down, then I'll play the synth, then it will populate with the synth. And then when it comes to here, it will arm the guitar channel, different channel. And then I can play a guitar lead and it will stop and disarm it there so it doesn't carry on. So I'm not recording it, but it will arm the channel. So you can do that for as many channels as you want. You could make it arm an effects channel. In this case, it's a guitar amp. But the kind of possibilities are, you know, pretty wide open for you to try it. So let's have a look. I recorded myself playing this and I've, I've used a couple of different cameras so you can sort of see um i won't talk over it i'll just label it so you can see which bits i actually did so don't judge me on it it was just uh i tried to do it quick and just try to do something quite simple um one thing i did find difficult was um keeping in time starting from scratch so that's why i put the the synth there and the hi-hats and i had, ended up doing a simpler part i had this kind of funky thing going on at first and it was like it was quite tricky so practice and obviously the more you practice the easier it is but let's have a look at the recording <laughs>
So I hope that gives you an idea of what's possible. I tried to mix it up a little bit and um, I sort of kept it simple on the rhythm guitar just to keep in time really. Um, but with a bit of planning, I'm sure I could do something a bit more elaborate, but do have a go, try it. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you've tried things, if it's difficult, any sort of troubleshooting tips. Um, it's something you've just got to work on and try really. And maybe I tried to do two different instruments, maybe you could just do it with one um, and try the arming thing, the disarm. That's kind of a really cool thing that I'm going to explore and try that. So do let me know how you get on trying this kind of thing. As I said right from the top of the video, there's lots of ways to do this and there's no easy way to do it. You've got to either buy equipment or learn how to do it this way or, you know, learn about that IAC routing thing. Um, either way, you know, there's a bit of a learning curve. So let me know how you get on. Let me know in the comments or you can send me a message on the link below in the description. And of course, if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe and check the other videos out on the channel. Thanks for watching.